Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you all. I got to be honest, I was nervous. A lawyer wearing makeup is nervous at an NRA convention. So I very much appreciate your gracious welcome. I want to put on my old hat for just a second uh, as a prosecutor. There are 10 things our forefathers thought enough about and thought were important enough to remind us of even shortly after our foundational document was ratified. And second on that list of things that they thought were important was the right of Americans to keep and bear arms. And they thought it was important then, and it's important now for at least three different reasons. Number one, the right to defend oneself or defend one's family or defend others who frankly are in need of self-defense is not a right that government gave you. It is a natural right, and no government can take it from you. Number two, there was... Number two, there was and there is a need for the citizenry to be trained to handle weaponry. Number three, our government is based on consent. The people consented to be governed in exchange for certain representations that were made to us. It is sort of akin to a social contract. And consent, both in theory and in actuality, can be withdrawn. Like with so many other conservative concepts, that three-part tripartite analysis of the Second Amendment came from a guy named Scalia in the landmark Second Amendment case, D.C. versus Heller. And I don't know what your politics are, and frankly, your politics are none of my business. I can just tell you from my side, I'm a Republican, from my side, we have lost five out of the last six popular votes for president. Five out of the last six times, our fellow citizens went into the ballot booth and pulled the curtain. They pushed the button more times than for my side than for the other side. So when you've lost five out of the last six anything, I think it is important to figure out how to persuade people that there are legal, constitutional, and practical underpinnings to our belief in the Second Amendment. But it is also important that we empower ourselves to confront the arguments made by those on the other side. So let's just start at the top. I do not need this president or any other law professor lecturing me on those who have been victimized by crime and violence. I saw it. I lived it. I experienced it. So when this president and others were working on their innocence projects, I was working on some guilty projects. And in every one of those cases, in every one of those cases, I had family members with me, along with law enforcement, who had been victimized by gun violence. So I don't need this president talking to me about having compassion for those who have been victimized. With freedom, with freedom, comes a corresponding responsibility. This is important. Because that responsibility is owed by you personally. I have a responsibility to exercise my freedom judiciously and appropriately with you. But collectively, what do we call that responsibility? This responsibility that we exercise our freedoms appropriately, what do we call that? We call it the law. Think about it. That's what the law is. We have codified that responsibility that we feel towards one another. So here, I want to ask you. How is this administration doing in the enforcement of current laws? You already know this. It's against the law currently for convicted felons to possess firearms or ammunition. So rather than register them to vote, why doesn't this administration actually prosecute those cases? <laughs> Lying in the application for the purchase of a firearm, already against the law. How are they doing on the prosecution of that? Those that have been court-martialed, already against the law to possess a firearm. Those who have been adjudicated mentally ill so they do not know the difference between right and wrong. How are they doing in the prosecution of that category? Those addicted to controlled substances, already against the law for you to possess firearms or ammunition. How is this administration doing? 
They are clamoring for new laws and they talk about gun control. And let me tell you, friends, this is to empower you to make the argument. There is gun control. There are controls over who can have guns, where you can have them, and what kind of guns you can have. And this administration is anemic in enforcing the current law. So they want to win. They want to win the debate on the Second Amendment. I want to win the war on crime. So I want to say this, I want you, and obviously you are, or you wouldn't be at this convention. I want you to continue to educate yourself and those around you on the legal, constitutional, and practical underpinnings of the Second Amendment. But I want us to collectively just agree that we will be damned if we are going to take lectures on compassion and the human toll of crime from an administration that advocates for sanctuary cities to protect convicted felons from deportation, and then those felons wind up killing daughters who are walking with their fathers on piers in San Francisco. You want more gun laws. Mr. President, I want you to enforce the ones that you already have because I'm not interested in a sanctuary for Mr. Lopez, I'm inter interested in a sanctuary for the Kate Steinleys of the world. Thank you and God bless you. God bless America.